We're going to look at completing the calculations to run an IV by gravity flow. When we're running an IV with gravity flow, we want to find drops per minute so that we can time that with our watch and count the drops in the drip chamber. We also want to round to a whole number so that we have something that is countable. For these problems, we're going to look at a couple different aspects so that we see the whole complexity, even though in your homework you'll probably just be asked for one detail at a time. For our first example, we have a thousand milliliters of D5RL to infuse in eight hours and we're using the 20 drop per milliliter tubing. So what we see that we're asked for is more details than just the drop per minute rate. So the first thing that it asks me for is the total volume, and I get that just by reading the question. And so we have a total volume of 1,000 milliliters. Next thing that it's asking me for is the milliliter per hour rate. And I know how to do that. I just take the 1,000 milliliters and divide it by the 8 hours. And that will give me milliliters per hour, just as I have it set up. So go to my calculator, and we have 1,000 divided by 8, and comes out even 125 milliliters per hour. Now, the drop per minute rate key thing is to notice that these are both rates, so these are totally related. Once I find one, I just have to convert it to the other. So I have already found that this is running at 125 milliliters per hour. That is the rate. I'm not actually changing how fast the fluid's coming out of the IV. I'm just changing how I measure it. And I'm supposed to get drops per minute, so I'm going to need to change those hours into minutes. So hours need to go into minutes and I know one hour is 60 minutes. That cancels the label of hours. You see I'm just using my dimensional analysis to figure it out. I need to change the milliliters into drops and I can do that with the tubing. So milliliters has to go on the bottom. Milliliters is for volume and so are drops. So according to the tubing there are 20 drops to one milliliter and that cancels my milliliter and gets me immediately to drops per minute which is exactly what I want so I'm going to go back to my calculator and have that 125 typed in before so times 20 divided by 60 and I need to round to a whole number so I can count it and so this is going to be 42 drops per minute Last thing it asked me is total time. Oh, that was given, so that's another easy one, so it's eight hours. So key thing from these is that these two rates are just two different ways of describing how fast the IV is running. And so if I know one of them, I can always use my dimensional analysis to convert to the other one. So let's take a look at another example. All right, for this example, I have 100 milliliters of D5W infusing at 10 drops per minute on a set using 15 drop per milliliter tubing. So again, it starts off total volume and that is given this time only 100 milliliters. Ask me about milliliters in hours. I have milliliters at 100, but I don't have an hours to go with it. So I'm going to leave that blank for a moment. Ask me about drops per minute and that is given in the problem as 10 drops per minute. So, just like we talked about the previous question, these two rates are totally connected. I know one of them, I can convert it to the other. So I'm going to start with my 10 drops per minute. This time I want the time to be converted to hours, so I know on the top here 60 minutes is the same as one hour, and that converts the time. I want the drops to go into milliliters, so drops were on the top. I have to put those 15 drops from the tubing on the bottom, and they go into 1 ml, and so that will cancel drops, and that would give me milliliters per hour, which is exactly what I want. So I go to my calculator, and 
we have 10 times 60 divided by 15. Oh, nice and even. So this gives us 40 milliliters per hour. So I have that solved. Now, total time. This total time was not given. So I have to think back into the problems that I did with IV rates. If I know the total volume and I know how fast it's running, I can use those first two numbers. And I'm going to set it up formally with dimensional analysis, but the math you're doing is really division. And so we take that, cancel the milliliters, and go to hours. And so we're ready to go to our calculator. And so we'll take 100, divide by 40, and we get 2.5, so 2 hours, 30 minutes. Key thing, it's right here with the circle. These two rates are just two different ways of describing the same thing. So a little dimensional analysis goes from one to the next. We're going to try one more example. So for this one, we have an IV that has been fusing at 25 drops per minute. So I'll fill that right in here, 25 drops per minute. And it's been running for the last eight hours. So I'll fill that in, eight hours. And it tells me about the tubing. So I come up here, I need a milliliter per hour rate, and I can do that first because I know these two rates. Wow, that's a terrible circle. I can do that first because I know that the two rates here are related. So I'm going to start with my 25 drops per minute. I need to change minutes into hours, so 60 minutes is one hour. And I need to change drops into milliliters, so drops is going to have to go on the bottom. And based on what I read, 15 is my number of drops per one milliliter, so that cancels drops. And I'm ready to do my math. So 25 times 60 divided by 15, and it's running at exactly 100 milliliters per hour. So I have one more piece remaining. I need to figure out the total volume. And I'm going to do this more by intuition, and then I will show you the actual math. The math has to match. When we think about what should happen, the math has to work out as well. I'm running the IV at 100 milliliters per hour, and I'm doing that for eight hours. So for the first hour, they get 100 milliliters. Second hour, they're up to 200 total. Third hour, 300 total. So eight hours should give me 800 as the total volume that they get. And when I'm looking at that math, I said my IV was running 100 milliliters per hour, and it was doing that for eight hours. So the hours cancel, and I'm just left with milliliters, and that gives me the 800 that made sense intuitively. I find that for these problems, dimensional analysis makes it easier than memorizing a formula. But there are formulas out there that you can use. The very first video that you watched had a formula, and you're welcome to use that formula if that works better for you. Sometimes the formulas will require that you do a little bit of algebra with them, whereas with the dimensional analysis, I don't have to memorize. I just have to cancel my units.